Wine, such an elegant and beautiful liquid, and like most beautiful things, it has a price, an astronomically high price. Boom, a 1019. Fine wines are truly in a league of their own. They exist in a world of collectors, experts, and holders of exceptional wealth. This is amazing to see a Monet water lilies in someone's house. All eager to pay well over $10,000 for a nice bottle of red on a Friday night. On the list here, single bottle, $16,000. And on top of this throne of delicious excess sits the most exclusive bottle of wine in the world, the 1945 Romine Conti. A single bottle of 1945 Romine Conti went on auction at Sotheby's and fetched an amazing $558,000, completely destroying the expected price of $32,000. The stellar rise of the Burgundy wines to the number one spot was in the making for several years. But in the early 2000s, only one man saw the full potential of the Burgundies and a way to get filthy rich off of them, even adopting the alter ego Dr. Conti. This man was Rudy Kurniawan, and he would become the greatest wine forgers of all time. He was manipulative because he knew how to develop that persona that would give him credibility in the very fine wine world. Mr. Kurniawan really went to the uh, nth degree. In as little as four years, Rudy Kurniawan sold over $30 million worth of fake wines that would fool even the best wine tasters. And Rudy's strength wasn't just his vast knowledge of wines and their origins, it was actually his amazing palate. He has perhaps one of the best palates that the world had seen in many, many years. You see, the average human has about four to 10,000 taste buds depending on age and genetics. And we use these not just to determine which foods and drinks we like, but actually to determine which ones are safe to consume. Now funny enough, the animal that has the highest number of taste buds is actually the catfish, which is a perfect analogy for the lie spun by Rudy in order to work his way up the elite world of wine enthusiasts. He said to people, basically, I'm a trust fund baby. Liquor distribution in um, Hong Kong. Now Rudy did not possess the 100,000 individual taste buds of a catfish, but it was clear that he possessed far more than the average human. And since our sense of taste is also dominated by our sense of smell, it's very likely that Rudy also possessed an incredible sense of smell, which allowed him to easily outperform the most experienced wine tasters. He had an exceptional memory. He knew the Bordeaux and Burgundy appellations by heart. So how was Rudy able to pull off this fraud? Because having a superior palate is one thing, but that in itself is not going to sell $30 million worth of wine. For this, Rudy needed to become an authority figure in the elite world of wine auctions, and that meant leaving LA for New York. At this point, New York was flooded with new money billionaires, all wanting to outdo each other by buying the most expensive bottle of wines just to show off. You had to dump out your glass of Latash because the Romane Conti was coming, and it was, it was ridiculous. This made New York the perfect hunting ground for a guy like Rudy, and all he needed was an inn, which he got when he met John Capon. Capon was an upcoming auctioneer in New York, and the perfect guy to facilitate Rudy in his scheme. Through John, Rudy got introduced to even more notable individuals in the world of fine wines, making Rudy a well-known guest at many dinners and wine tastings, where he would always show up with an exceptional bottle of wine. Oh, here comes Rudy. Rudy's coming to this dinner. You know, what's Rudy going to bring? What, what incredible old wine that none of us have ever seen before will he bring? Rudy was able to impress everyone with his knowledge of wines and his infamous wine cellar, from which he was able to produce one amazing bottle after another. But his new friends and associates had no idea that he was literally producing these bottles in his LA homemade laboratory. I refill and put the cork back. Through his exceptional nose and sense of taste, Rudy knew exactly which regular wines to mix to produce the taste of some of the greats in the wine industry. The Napa Valley uh, Pinot Noir, which had 40s stroke 50s DRC, leading to the fact that he could actually use this wine in creating uh, a wine from the Domaine de, Domaine de la Romne County from the 1940s or 50s. Like a Roman emperor, Rudy made sure that wherever he was, the wine was always flowing lavishly, making him one of the most well-known wine collectors in New York. So when Rudy went to his buddy John Capon, 
to action off some of the wonderful wines, nobody thought anything of it. Not only that, but the Rudy Kurniwan auctions began attracting buyers from all over the world since he was listing many incredible wines. This allowed Rudy to sell well over $30 million worth of wine with great ease, perhaps even a little bit too easy since Rudy started making serious mistakes. The estate manager said that in his life, he'd never seen a bottle of Romane Conti 45, while Rudy Kurniwan had two, three, four, five, ten bottles. So there was a problem. Now it's important to note here that Rudy had already sold hundreds of bottles and was making hundreds more. So it's quite possible that he simply thought, f**k it, there is no need to be thorough anymore since the mistakes were quite obvious. With some of the wines, he was no longer taking the time to perfect the taste and was simply filling them up and focusing solely on the exterior of the bottle. We should have a tasting of the Rumier wines that he'd bought. Out of 11 wines we tasted, uh, six were clearly fake. While with others, he made even bigger mistakes by labeling the wrong year. And my first thought was, wow, I've never seen those before. And I was intrigued and then I thought, wait a minute, I've never seen that before. The mislabeling of the Ponceau wines was really the beginning of the end for Rudy since he had now angered the one winemaker that wasn't afraid to stand up against fraud, Laurent Ponceau. And he asked me a very silly question. Since when do you produce the Clos Saint-Denis? Clos Saint-Denis is one of the Grand Cru that we, we produce now. We started to produce this in 1982. You see, one of the reasons why well-executed wine fraud is so hard to stop is that every victim has a vested interest into keeping quiet. Well, we have a selection of my fake wines. For 421 bottles that are definitely fake, I've spent $4.5 million. If you had just bought $1 million worth of fake wines, do you then go and announce to the world that you were scammed? Of course not. This will only make you look stupid and you'll still not get your money back. Winemakers also have a history of keeping quiet since any lawsuit would only attract negative attention to their well-curated brands, so they tend to let it slide. This means that many cases go unresolved since the FBI is not going to waste resources if the victims do not want to cooperate or press charges. However, Laurent Ponceau was far too proud to let this fraud go, and he was like a hawk on Rudy's ass. He actually followed Rudy all over the world, from Europe to North America, and all over Asia, all while collecting evidence about the auctions and resources that Rudy was using. This evidence was later used by the FBI to acquire a search warrant for Rudy's LA home, and when they opened the door to his house, they found the legendary wine laboratory. In the end, Rudy Kurniwan was sentenced to 10 years in prison and had to forfeit a staggering $20 million. In addition to this, he was also ordered to pay $28 million in restitution to his victims. This all made Rudy Kurniwan the biggest wine fraud in the history of fine wines.